Well, welcome to Memorial Day weekend. Welcome to the Chef Series at the Farmer's Market. My name is Michelle Lonergan, and I work with Local First. And Local First is the official sponsor of the Chef Series again this year. We did it last year. If you're not familiar with Local First, we are a nonprofit based in West Michigan that promotes shopping and eating and basically living local. So uh, we are here to promote uh, shopping, your sour sourcing your food locally, and also uh, learning how to cook with those local foods. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about Local First, you can check us out on the web at localfirst.com. We have a great searchable database of all the local businesses along the lakeshore. Uh, but also on the table behind you, we have a great directory called The Guide to Living Local. Uh, we have a new one being published in a couple of weeks, so look for that. But if you're uh, interested in the one that we've had from the past year, we have over 650 local businesses all along the lakeshore and in Grand Rapids. So at this point, I would like to introduce Eduardo Fuentes. Good morning, Eduardo. Eduardo Fuentes is a Holland, Michigan native and a graduate of the Culinary Arts Program at Grand Rapids Community College. He is currently the executive chef at Camp Geneva, and he's also a board member for Eighth Day Farm. Very cool farm. I love Eighth Day Farm. They are members of Local First. His family takes pleasure in participating in CSA programs so they can enjoy produce grown right in our community year round. Fuentes relies both on his culinary skills and his experience as a father to create dishes that appeal to taste buds no matter the age. And it looks like we're going to be making coconut carrot and kale and carrot asparagus apple summer roll. So you're in for a treat, so enjoy. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me fine. Uh, we're kind of running with this pretty good here. Um, right here, my uh, fabulous assistant here is this is uh, Miss Callie. Hi. Hi. Where do you go to school? Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Awesome. Tell me some of the things that you enjoy. I like to read and um, I like to play my trumpet. That's good. And uh, tell me about your life of veggies. Uh, yeah, good and bad, kind of. What, what are some of the things that um, have happened in your life of veggies? Um, I've eaten a lot of veggies. Mm. I like a lot of veggies. And, um, has, it, has it come naturally? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad she's really, uh, you know, it didn't. It didn't automatically happen that she liked veggies right away. Um, one of the things that we had. One of the things that we uh, we encountered in our home is, uh, you know, it would be easy for me just to make a dish and then put it on uh, put it on the table. Say this is what we're having, you know. And, and as, as a household, we would try to just have one meal of veggies and like lentils or beans or something, something just to stay away from the you know the chickens, the beef, the pork, all that kind of stuff. And uh, typically, what would happen is. Uh, you know, I'd make something, she, was she would be, you know, uh, sometimes things would be unfamiliar, and, uh, and then it would be kind of a bartering system at the table, you know, just eat a little bit of your veggies, you can have some of your dessert, and, you know, so there was a lot of energy in that process. So um, somehow she just became really curious of, of what was going on in the kitchen. And uh, so it took me a little bit to kind of invite her in and, and, you know, start working with things. And, you know, now we're starting to kind of build a little bit more comfort, you know, working side to side, you know. And um, what we've discovered is she has much more of an acceptance for vegetables as, uh, as she kind of sees and grows and, and kind of learns with these things. And uh, mealtime, we don't really have that bartering anymore, you know. She just really is just empowered by the work that she's put into the to the meal and just kind of invested into the home also so I'm just really pleased that she's uh, she's able to offer this in our home and just really makes things a lot comfortable so um, today we are going to start out with our carrot and asparagus summer rolls and if anybody's not familiar with uh, summer rolls it's basically like uh, like a spring roll just not deep fried so what we're going to be doing is we're going to shave up some uh, uh, a carrot, asparagus, and some apple, and then I've got some other things we're going to toss in there. But we're going to be uh, filling this rice noodle and then rolling it up like a burrito. And that's going to be kind of a snack size, kind of like a spring roll. So it's very uh, fresh and light, and uh, it's really a, a good summer thing here. So uh, 
Um, let's go ahead and start out with that. Uh, Miss Callie, why don't you go ahead? I already washed all of our vegetables here. So what you can start doing is um, uh, grab some of your asparagus and I'll chop it up for you so we can get it shredded. And um, so this is kind of what happens a lot is uh, she becomes uh, my little side hands in the kitchen. And so I'll start things going and she'll get go other things on their way, reaching through here. Oh, the, the rice noodles? Um, yeah. You can you buy them. Yep. Here, I'm going to give you some more. I appreciate the questions. Feel, feel free to ask any questions as they come along. A um, couple things that we have here. I've got some rice paper. And uh, this actually I got from the uh, um, Chinese store up by uh, Shell, um, right next to Shell on uh, Ottawa Beach Road. Um, I think you can find them at Myers too. I haven't really looked for them there, but uh, it's pretty... Uh, it's a pretty common thing, just, you know, got to hunt it out a little bit. And then separately what we have is I have some, uh, this is, they call it vermicelli. But basically it's like an angel hair style uh, rice noodle. So the, both rice noodles cook really fast. And I, I kind of took the step away from it just for the ease of, of uh, kind of our production here on stage. Um, so what happens with, uh, with the rice paper is I'll end up taking a sleeve out and then just dipping it in some water and that's gonna loosen it up. And then from there, then we start um, kind of wrapping it. And it happens pretty quick. It goes from a thick, rigid piece of paper to flimsy goo in a way. So it, it all depends on how long you have it in there. And then for the rice noodle itself, really all it takes is kind of like if you've cooked couscous before, it's very similar to that, where you bring your water to a boil and then you drop your uh, rice noodle in there and then just shut off the heat and then uh, you know come back to it three four minutes later and you're good to go just kind of rinse it with some cold water stop it from cooking and uh, that's that so we got asparagus going right now so I'm gonna peel up some carrots and then we'll get some apple for you miss Callie okay. all right so miss Callie what other things are in your life right now um, that you're excited about is uh, you wish school was going longer and you want to be in there a little bit more or no. No? 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 No. Okay. I've been counting down the days. So we have 12 left. 12 days left. That's great. 12. All right. What grade are you in? Six. Yes. Do you have a favorite uh, favorite course or uh, study? Um, my favorite subject is language arts. All right. But my favorite class is band. That is good. So she was in the, the she was in the uh, tulip time parades this time, marching and trumpeting, and that's a bit more complicated for my blood. But uh, it was quite cool that she was able to do that. So we got asparagus being shredded up here. That looks really good after you do that. And then let's go ahead and do some more carrot. Camp Geneva, it is, uh, it's a camp right on the north side of town, and uh, during the summertime, it's, uh, base, it's a Christian camp, and we have age groups from, uh, well, she's been at Camp Geneva. When, when did you start going to Camp Geneva? I started in about five years ago. Which would be around what grade? Third grade? Okay, so she did the third grade, you did day camp, where you basically went there for uh, um, a whole day. We would drop her off at like 8 o'clock in the morning, bring her with a sack lunch, and then we'd pick her up about 5 o'clock in the evening, and uh, they would just run the kids with all sorts of activities all day, and uh, she'd come home completely tuckered. So, you know, it was great, because she would like sleep right away as soon as she got home, so, yeah. So then a few years later, then what happened with uh, once you kind of graduated day camp? Then you like stay at the camp for like three days in like when you're in fourth grade or so. And then, and then you like stay there like overnight and then you do it again and again. And the older you get, the lengthier you get, the longer you can stay at camp. 
Awesome. What are some of the fun activities you have at Geneva? Um, there's a pool. That's probably my favorite activity. <laughs> and then there's plenty of games that the pool can't play, so like Capture the Flag. And there's Color Wars, which is one of my favorite games. Awesome. So we're kind of working on, I'm working on a couple of dishes at once here. Um, the other dish that I have going is going to be the uh, coconut carrot. And that takes a little bit longer to, to do. And also, um, this is kind of a practice that my, my wife actually uh, pointed out to me, you know. Uh, um, I've made stocks a lot in, in, uh, in kitchens, but it's so easy for us to just, you know, omit that step and say we don't have time to do it. And so basically, um, we found online that, you know, you can just keep on storing your veggie scraps in the freezer. And then when you have enough supply of veggie scraps, then you can just boil those and simmer them. And then uh, you can make your own veggie broth. And that's what we'll use for like either rice or cooking beans or, you know, instead of water. And um, so that's kind of the newest step that we've been incorporating. And it's, it's something that I have to reintegrate into my, my workload because, you know, it's, I get blinded by the workload and just want to discard the scraps and just move on. And uh, so this is kind of like, you know, in the mind frame of recycling and all those things that, you know, where, where we, we try to do. <laughs> so, so we got carrot there. That looks great. Is the size pretty good, Miss Kelly? Yeah. All right. Yes. This, okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. All right, so this is it. Um, it was a garage sale find. <laughs> so, you know, they have the, uh, the powerful versions of it as uh, this is basically a manual food processor. Is that the right side? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It actually moves along pretty easily, you know. You can see she's, uh, you know, she's got some guns, and uh, she can uh, she can operate this thing pretty easily. She she'll wash it and uh, put it together and, and try it on the table. Yep, there you go. There you go. So I don't really know who makes it. Well, it's got a, a funny French name on there, but I I don't know much of the device, but I'm sure there's plenty of out there somewhere. So. So this looks really good. Okay, go ahead and keep on shredding those up. I'm gonna do you some apples, and then I'll chop up some cilantro, and we'll start making the uh, filling for this uh, little summer roll. Okay. So, you doing good? All right. Yeah, it's kind of like a mandolin. Not that little tiny guitar, but the, uh, the little food uh, grating instrument. All right. Apple, I'm not going to put in my stock scrap. <laughs> Basically, all veggies I'll put in my, uh, my little, uh, little bag of goodies. Can you just put it in the fridge until it gets Freezer, yep. Freezer, yep. And then, uh, like, uh, my onion scraps will go in there. Uh, my kale stems will go in there. I'm really, I don't really discriminate, you know. Veggie, uh, Carter, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, everybody say hi to Carter. Hi. All right, that's good. I like, uh, I like these little uh, appearances here. So, yeah, I just kind of add um, whatever veggie scraps I have, something hard, dense, you know, and aromatic. Celery is really good. Onion, carrot, of course. Um, and that's it. So... All right, you're doing great. So I'm gonna give you some carrot, or some apples with your carrot. And then I'm gonna start cutting some uh, carrot and onions for the, uh, for my next dish. There we go. All right. So um, a few items here that you'll see. Um, Ume plum vinegar is kind of a new one that we've been playing around with at home. It's, uh, um, it's kind of our salt substitute. Uh, we, we use that in, uh, in a lot of different varieties here. Uh, of course, raw honey is always good. Here's our grapeseed oil that we're going to be using in our, uh, our wrap. And then uh, a recent favorite is uh, pomegranate vinegar. So, and uh, coconut milk, always a fun. What's that? Can you get those on my ears 
raw vinegar you can get. Um, these, the, oh, sorry, yeah, that, see? She keeps me on my toes. So the, the raw honey, yeah, you, it's pretty available anywhere. The pomegranate vinegar, the only place I've found this so far is, what do we get, that Trader Joe's? So, you know, that's uh, if you're in for a road trip. And then same with the ume plum. So I do have some specialty items here, and that's kind of the beauty of this dish. You can, uh, you can throw in any of your favorite uh, vinegars that you have. So um, if you even have like a, a vinaigrette, instead of wanting to, you know, do the grapeseed oil and then these things, you can throw even a balsamic vinaigrette in there, you know, and it'll change it just a little bit, but the concept is still the same. Shredded fresh, shredded fresh veggies, wrapped together and they hold and it's just a nice simple thing that you know everybody can uh, kind of dig in so that looks like a good amount of carrot there start doing some uh, some apple and then i'll chop you up some cilantro and we'll be right on our way all right so separately i'm going to start working on the um the other dish and that's going to be the carrot and kale and this um this was a dish that was kind of started with sweet potato. Um, but sweet potatoes really aren't seasoned right now. Carrots are abundant. So um, that's where that comes in. My sweet potato scraps will still go into the same bin. And a little olive oil in here just to keep us going. Oh, I have to mention separately, we had a lot of assistance to make this happen today. Um, there's a stand right across the way here, right across the stand here. They supplied us their local organic beans, their fresh dried beans, and uh, they're located right off of uh, Blair, just north of uh, Port Sheldon Road by Careerline Tech Center. And uh, it's a certified organic farm and uh, just local family, and they've got probably 15, 18 different varieties of beans that even I haven't seen. You know, I, I could spot like five. So, you know, one of the, th one of the things that I enjoyed was uh, um, so the, the, it's called Shady Side Farms. And one of the things that I enjoyed on top of that is they gave us uh, basic instructions on the back on kind of how to treat the beans. So these are, uh, they actually worked much faster than a, a typical dried bean that I'd buy at the store. So um, for both these beans here, I have uh, Jacob's Cattle. It's kind of, it's a thick skinned bean that's kind of like a kidney in a way, spotted. Um, and then separately, I have a, a Nunya bean. And this one is a little bit thinner, um, thinner textured uh, bean. This, uh, the Nunya cooked up really quick. I, uh, I soaked both these beans last night before I uh, went to bed. And then this morning, um, the Nunya cooked up in about 20 minutes. And then the uh, Jacob's Cattle this was a little bit more thicker and dense. This one uh, cooked up in about a half an hour. So it really, uh, it changed my mind on how I deal with beans because I have this, uh, um, I tell myself I don't have time to work with beans. And the reality of it, it just happens really fast. So it's just, you know, reincorporating these things however I can as a, you know, protein supplement and uh, all that. How are you doing there? All right, we're, are we about ready to start adding some things? Let's do those other two wedges and then we'll add that in our little bowl and then you can set your little uh, sheet pan aside and uh, we'll start working out of that here. So, so these carrots, um, all I'm gonna do for the uh, coconut carrot and kale is I'm uh, of course peel them but I just cut them on a bias, you know, nothing too, uh, nothing too difficult. And I'm starting those to go right now. So what I want to do though, um, you can do these in a few different ways. Summertime, I don't really like uh, kicking on the oven at the home, but I really enjoy uh, a sweet roasted carrot. So one way you can do that on the stove top is to back off your heat and just really have a, like a slow sauteed carrot. That way you still kind of have the same properties. You know, you have the uh, um, sweet carrot that's kind of firm and a little, uh, little soft and squishy. And, uh, but during the, during the fall and the winter time, I would just kind of chop them even larger and then I would just roast them. 
that's actually my preferred way to do it. Um, but both work just fine. It just depends on how much time you have and uh, how much heat you want in the, your, your kitchen. So, so got a jumper. All right. How we look in there? Good. All right. We're going to give this a toss here. Yeah, go ahead. That looks like a really good mixture there. So in there, so in the spring roll, I wanted to add a little bit more protein into this as well. So um, we're going to add some of the, uh, the Nunea beans. And those um, are really soft. They won't stand out too far in, uh, in the spring roll. And also separately, what I like to do is put a little rice noodle in there. But I don't, uh, I try not to do too much of this rice noodle because then you start getting, then you start absorbing too much starch. And that's kind of the downfall of these uh, refined rice noodles and the rice papers. They're really high in starch. So if you're kind of, um, if you're, you're, you're watching your sugar intakes, you know, for diabetes or whatever uh, kind of uh, uh, dietary issue, um, that can be an issue with uh, the rice noodles. So, so I just do a little bit in there. It looks really good. Go ahead and keep your gloves on. So we're going to give you a little rice, a little pomegranate vinegar, a little ume plum. So unfortunately, uh, we uh, we can't allow. Uh, we can't allow sampling, which I would really wish that you guys could partake in that. Um, so that's going to kind of be where you guys have to go and just kind of try this out at your home. So here's a little cilantro in there. Yep. All right. So that looks really good. I am going to pull this off and then... We don't have another workstation for you. I do actually. One moment. <laughs> I'm back. All right. So we've got our basic goods in there, and I think we're ready to, to, to wrap. What we'll do is, there you go. OK. I will pass this around. And uh, you'll be able to kind of see the mixture. You want to hand this off? You'll be able to see the mixture, kind of smell it, and kind of get the idea of, of uh, what this, uh, the inners are going to be in here. So you'll have the pomegranate vinegar in there. Everything's kind of fresh and crisp. There's the, little, there's the cilantro in there. Oh, yeah, I forgot the grapeseed oil. Look at you. Woohoo! Somebody's reading. Yep. Yep, we've got everything in there. So now, the kale is in the next one. The kale is in the, uh, yeah, we're just doing the apples, the asparagus. Oh, you're right. See, look at you. Yeah, a novice at the wheel here. So, okay, yep. So this will happen pretty quick here. Yep, kale is kind of a favorite in our household. So I already washed these earlier today. So here we go with some kale. So um, when you're working with the raw kale, especially in a form like this, you really want to chop it up really fine and thin. and. Uh, there's an actual term for that. Do you know what that is, Miss Kelly? Chiffonade. And do you know what that uh, what that means? Yep. So this is exactly what she's talking about. It's like a shred, basically. So, so here's your kale in there. Thank you for the reminder. 
it's all about accountability. So my carrots are moving along just fine. I got to clean up a few things. My kale scraps are going in with my, uh, my stock for later. And then now here comes some onion. All right, Miss Callie, I'll be with you in just one moment. I want to get these, uh, these onions in with the carrots. Pardon? Can you shred kale in a food processor? It's worth the shot. I've never tried it. I, uh, I, I suppose if you have the right attachments in there and, uh, you know, it's packed nice and tight, I don't see why not. Okay, so I'm starting to get a little bit more color than I would uh, prefer in this dish. So I'm going to back away the heat a little bit and just let it kind of sit on cruise control. All right, rice noodle time, rice paper time. So now, this is uh, pretty thick. So really, it doesn't take that long. So this is warm water. It's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not cold, it's not extremely hot. So kind of drain off a little bit of the excess that's there. And now you can see it's starting to be a little bit more pliable. And this is where the, the clock is against you now. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to see on that little white board. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this together the first time around. So we put it basically in the center. We're going to roll it over and try to get it as tight as we can. And then we're still holding it in place. And then we're going to lock in the other sides. And then after that, we kind of just tuck in the rest of them with our fingers, just kind of walking it across. And then you can do, and then this is what you end up with. This is your, your summer roll. And if you want a dipping sauce, you can, there's a lot of different dipping sauces you can go with. Um, I'm not necessarily a fan of dipping sauces with the uh, summer rolls. They can be a little difficult to eat sometimes, and the stuff will just shred apart. So, but it's, uh, if you're bold and daring, there are lots out there to try. So, here we go. Here's your next one. Ooh. See how fragile this stuff is? Yep, that's okay. There you go. Have at it, Miss Callie. So now, so that's basically what she has going here. And this is um, a lot how it happens, where, you know, I can get, I can get Miss Callie kind of established and show her kind of uh, once ways and kind of lead her through. And then I can, it'll free me up to go up to the next task. And then just kind of bounce back and forth, you know. And uh, it, it helps us all. Okay. Looks like you're uh, going a little thick there. Coconut and kale. All right, all right, so, yep. So we kind of rushed a little bit with the uh, rice, rice noodle. Paper. Yeah, the rice paper, yep. See, now it's actually getting to the state that we want it. So once again, kind of come in and start your edge right there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you lock in your sides. You're still holding it in the center. Lock in your side again, and then you just continue to just walk it on up and roll it right in there. And there you go. All right, let's get another one going. No, they don't really freeze that well. They will. St you can keep them in the refrigerator overnight. Just use some uh, some wax paper to sit them on. Uh, a regular plate, they'll kind of stick to a little bit, and uh, that, that kind of works against you. So, I probably wouldn't do frozen though. Okay. Serve them cold. Yep. Room. Cut it. Um, you can do both. It's easier to just serve them as is. Because uh, here I'll show you once the. Uh, so they will start. You can see see how it's getting a little sticky. 
and that's kind of the nature of the rice paper and that's why it kind of helps just to kind of let it dry out you kind of need a little time for the rice noodle to sit and adjust and, um, and then you can kind of come back to it later so if, if I rush into it you'll kind of see like this is the new one we just we just made it's kind of a little tacky look at that you're getting there all right here I'm gonna go ahead and continue to make more I'm gonna hop over to the other side and uh, the rice papers are right next to you there so here I, I get to come join you guys all right so this one was pretty uh, made really quickly here and uh, it's still a little soft so you can see if I'm trying to cut it it's really delicate and then on top of that the uh, here, we'll pass this one around too. And feel free to touch it and do whatever. Nobody's going to eat it, so it's just uh, it's just a good hands-on. That way, you can kind of get a, get a feel for it. Um, things will start to settle up a little bit more as you allow it, but then it also depends on um, how tight you rolled it from the start. So it takes a little practice. In uh, you know, it just uh, as you can see here, kind of everybody can uh, can work at this. Excuse me, there. Thank you. All right. Does that No, it's neutral. There's like nothing in there at all. So both these dishes that we made here, um, there's, uh, there's no dairy in there. There's no soy, um, no gluten. What am I missing? Of course, no fish and all that kind of stuff. There's really no allergens in this dish at all. So it, it's, a, it's a really good dish if you're trying to stay away from any specific uh, allergen in general. And if you want to add stuff in there, you're more than welcome to. I can see some cheese in there, in there of some sort, um, many other things. So you want to go ahead and uh, do another? All right. Okay, now I'm going to focus a little bit more on our carrots and kale. So what I have here is I started out with the, uh, the olive oil just to get it going. Um, red onion I did not have, so I just substitu uh, substituted the uh, white onion in its place. And uh, next what I have is the, the next key components would be some more rice noodle, some more kale. So I'm going to add the beans just to get them, uh, get them kind of warmed up a little bit. Give a little toss. And I'm going to come back around here just to kind of show you guys kind of what I'm working with here. So the uh, carrots were sliced thin enough. You know, you can start to see a little bit of color, and they start to be a little bit loose. And, you know, the, the, the onions really aren't that browned at all. Um, so from this point, I like where um, the veggies are, are sitting, and this is where I'll reduce the heat even further, and I will add in the, the kale. The kale needs to be uh, softened up a little bit. Um, in this dish, I like to have it thicker chunked because I'm cooking with it. Unlike the, uh, the spring roll that Miss Callie is doing, we shredded that, and that was good for raw eating but not for this one right here so yep that's basically kind of where we're at with these things you know yep so then um i'll, I'll come back after i add the uh the kale in there and then get the rice milk or excuse me the, the coconut milk in there and you can guys can start to see just a finished product in here how you doing miss callie Man, you've got an army of them up here. So what are some things that you learned in this process of rice noodle, maybe, or the rice paper? Any, uh, any pro tips you can give, uh, give our peoples out here? It takes a real long time to master getting it tight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> How about working with that little uh, shredder? How's, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you just like turn the crank. <laughs> it's really simple. Really simple? 
So did you know what it was when you first saw it? No. No? And how long do you think you've been working with this little, uh, this little device? Not very long. Hmm. Are there any other uh, pieces of kitchen equipment that, uh, see, I started shredding. I went on autopilot and uh, I was just talking here. I shredded the kale and I, I, I didn't really want to do that, but that's okay. So anyway, back to you, Miss Callie. Um, are there any other, uh, any other things that you like working with in the kitchen? Um, well, I like to... What about devices? Uh, well, I know that she works with the uh, food processor. Yep, and uh, much like this thing, she's able to take it apart and put it back together. And so this kale is starting. I'm going to add a little bit more kale in here. The produce here was, uh, was offered to me from uh, Visser Farms right, right down the road here um, in their stand. And uh, they supplied me with the veggies for today. Um, the beans came from Shadyside Farm, which is right across the way. And I, I did it again. I started shredding the kale. This is force of habit. <laughs> Just means I, I, I can't cook it as long, and that's okay. So now I'll come back around, and you guys can, uh, you'll be able to see that the kale is starting to get a little bit um, oily and soft and kind of wilty a little bit. And that's kind of what we're looking at for this right here. And, um, it's just starting to soften up. So like, see there's uh, right in here, we have kind of the, the uncooked kale is kind of dusty yet and the, the shiny stuff. So now what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll, uh, I'll add the coconut milk in here. And uh, let me look at my recipe because I kind of forget right now what I need. <laughs> Yeah, rice noodle. Yeah, rice noodle and uh, coconut milk. Yeah. No problem. Just be sure to turn your mic off. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we are. I've got a lot of veggie scraps going right back into my mix. Okay. And now turn this up a little bit. I got to pick back up where I was at. So now my beans are coming up. My kale is getting where I kind of want it. And uh, now I can start seasoning and adding things. So uh, depending, uh, I got the light coconut milk. It all depends on what you're looking for. The regular coconut milk will, uh, uh, gives you a lot of flavor, but then um, it's also solid in point. So you'll have to shake it up. This stuff, you really don't need to do that. Um, And then also with this dish, you can choose kind of your, uh, not all coconut milks are as sweet as, uh, as I may like or as you may like. So that's where the honey comes in. And you can kind of, depending on the amount of veggies you have and the strength of your coconut milk, you know, that will always vary on how much honey you want to add or not add. So um, that's where kind of the, uh, the tasting comes in here. So we got our coconut milk, the kale is in there, and now the rice noodle, which I cooked already, I want to add at the last minute because um, this itself is going to start to uh, to start cooking again. And the thing with the rice noodle is it comes in really long strands. So when I uh, it's dried and condensed, but by the time you cook it, it stretches out pretty far. So usually when I take the the rice noodle off of the heat. I'll just take a pair of scissors and just start cutting in the pan, just randomly. And then uh, once I, I go to cool the rice noodle, I'll do the same thing. Once it's in the colander, I'll just start cutting it up. And uh, that way, I'll end up with nice small pieces. Otherwise, they'll be, you know, it'll be like Lady and the Tramp. And you're trying to have dinner. So. All right.
So this is us. We are in conclusion here. And I will pass this dish around so you guys can take a look. Little bit of honey. Little bit of cracked black. And a little sea salt. I just, I'm really, a, you know, and, and my, my taste buds go in seasons. And uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Sometimes I really just like a lot of sweet things in a row. Sometimes I like spicy. And it just really just changes for me. So I say don't be afraid to experiment on where you're at. So I'm going to shut off the heat here, and we'll actually pass two of these around so multiple people can look at this. Is that your main course? Yeah, this would be, this is kind of like the main course. And uh, like I said, if you want more and more protein, just add some more beans. Or you can do a couple beans. You can do lentils in there too. Why don't you go and take a look at that? Yep, same thing. You can kind of see the uh, the kale is starting to loosen up a little bit, and you got your rice noodle in there, and all your golden veggies, and um, then you just kind of flavor it to your likings at that point. So, um, thank you very much for coming out. This is um, one last thing I just want to mention here is it's um, we live in a really good area here, and we're this is a great movement that we have going on right now with this. Uh, with all these different uh, farmers markets, with all these different farms offering their local made foods and all these handcrafted uh, uh, crafts and just all sorts of things. You know, it's, it's, a really, uh, it's a really good time in all of our lives here. And I would just encourage those, if you're not familiar with the farmers market, to come in and just have some conversations with people and see what kind of things are. And, uh, you know, with, with um, you know, 8th Day Farm, they provide a lot of veggies. They've got a CSA program in there. And you, um, is everybody familiar with CSA? Okay. Well, what CSA basically is, it's a com community supported agriculture. And all these area farms have this um, system where basically you buy in to, um, you buy in a certain amount of shares and every week you get uh, veggies from the, from the farm. And all these farms offer it, and, you know, and, and this is kind of one thing that I've been uh, a little bit more adjusted with as well, because um, I've dealt with probably three or four different CSAs, and I'm okay with that, because it, it reminds me of, you know, blended families in a way. You know, different people have different uh, influences in my life, and that's the same with a lot of these farms, you know. I'll, I'll hop. I'll, I'll work with a farm for a little bit and kind of, you know, kind of understand them and interact with them and, you know, eat their veggies and then, you know, see what else kind of happens next. And um, it's just kind of a nice relationship that I have connected to all these other area farms. You know, I can kind of understand what everybody's uh, working with and the goods and the bads and really what it ends up to be is just a relationship with the community and uh, kind of have it in the responsibility of, of interacting with everybody. So I would just encourage those who are, are not familiar with the CSA and you want to get a little bit more veggies into your life, um, just kind of, you know, you take yourself to the, uh, to the internet and uh, see what this, this community has to offer. Um, Eighth Day Farm has got a lot of information on there. Visser Farm has got a lot of stuff on there also. Like I said, they, they offered all this produce to me today. And, you know, it's just people want to get their stuff out there. And that's really kind of where we're at. So I'm really glad that you guys came out to uh, kind of see and interact. And um, I hope Miss Callie's doing well. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Um, are there any questions that uh, anybody has here while I'm, I'm here? No? It said they're about sauteing them, but now you boiled yours, right? Yeah, I boiled them. And actually, that's a great question. Because uh, so her question here was uh, on the instructions back here. I'm gonna take off my gloves here. So, so on the instructions in here, it has a method called in here for uh, 
um, soaking overnight and then sauteing your beans to uh, to complete. And actually, I did that the other night, and that works really well. That actually changed my view on beans, being able to saute a bean, because what it gave me was that, you know, that nuttier flavor in a way, you know, the difference between a raw piece of bread and, and toast. That's exactly what happened with the bean, where the bean was kind of neutral at one point, but then when I sauteed it all the way through, um, I was able to then incorporate, you know, garlic or more salt or, you know, all this stuff. It, you know, it became my meat at that point. So, you know, that's, um, I'm really happy for the opportunity that uh, Shady Farm Shadyside Farm um, brought this to because these were a lot of beans that I was not aware of and uh, even their uh, their suggested use here you know they've got a lot of great information up on the interweb <laughs> on the interweb <laughs> on that thing up there um, and uh, you know they, they, they give a lot of suggestions they have a they have a pool of uh, recipes already out there that they've tested and they enjoy and yeah so for soups did you boil it yeah, for soups, yep. And there's actually a couple different breeds up there. I would just go in there and tell them kind of what you're looking for, and they'll weave you in and out of kind of what you want, you know. Basically, what I've been finding is there's, you know, with the two beans that I had here, um, this uh, Jacob's Cattle Bean is a really thick, hearty bean. This one will hold up and, you know, be in stews and whatever, chili, you know, I can see it in there. And then this Nunya here, um, you can saute with it. There's also another variety that's really thin like this that you can make a different form of hummus. And that one is called, I don't have it right here. Actually, I have the bag. I have the bag, but I didn't cook with it. It was my problem. I, I had uh, a limited time and, and other things that I wanted to do. So here is a yellow Indian bean, uh, yellow woman Indian bean, yellow Indian woman beans. There. Anyway, this one is a quick cooking one, and you can make a, another form of hummus out of that as well. So um, you can go and add fresh dill. You can take these things in any direction you want to go. You know, just don't stick to the regular boundaries of just what a hummus is. So um, lots of stuff. Yeah, there's some uh, some cards up here for uh, for Shady Side also, and then oh, Miss Callie's back. Welcome. Awesome. And then uh, feel free to uh, just kind of find us out on, uh, on the internet. Um, Camp Geneva is also sponsoring uh, uh, a triathlon for kids. It's uh, two Saturdays from now. So there's some information up online for that as well. And we also have a gentleman back there, uh, Todd. Go ahead, he's waving his hands. He's got information about a fundraiser that we're doing where we're gathering a lot of local talent. And we're going to be having this party out at the, uh, our gross, uh, the, the town center right there by Star Theater. It's the, the farmland that got built inside of a parking lot. And that's a lot what Eight Day does. They repurpose uh, urban land and have, and they kind of educate on how we can farm, and also do this in our own backyards as well. So there's a lot of promotion. There's a lot of information out there, and uh, just please come find us out. And uh, I really appreciate that you came out to uh, spend a little time with me. And uh, how about a, a warm welcome here for Miss Callie, the bold one? Is there anything else? Good. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much.